Praise be Jesus and Mary. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. I think for some of you, this might be your first time uh, back to worship at Mass inside of a church in a few months. And so it's good to have everyone back. And you know, one of the norms right now that we're observing in the Archdiocese is that we can only have 50% capacity in the church. And so I counted the seats and how many people we can fit, uh, but actually to be more accurate, I shouldn't have included the first two rows in the church in the count because we know that Catholics don't sit up close anyway. But uh, so it's good to have you back. And today we celebrate this solemnity of Pentecost, which finishes the Easter season. And so Pentecost is sometimes called the Easter of the Holy Spirit. And we had our first reading, which explains the whole event of Pentecost from the Acts of the Apostles, which is sometimes called the Gospel of the Holy Spirit. So just like the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, explain to us what Jesus did and what he taught, so, in a similar way, the Acts of the Apostles teaches us what the Holy Spirit did in the beginning of the church and what he taught through the mouths of the Apostles and other apostolic men. We should call to mind the, the reason why the Jewish people celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. There were three main feasts that they, they celebrated, and one of them was Pentecost. And that was to uh, remember the law and the first fruits. Okay, the law, which was given by Moses on Sinai, and then also the first fruits of the year. And so we see how that was really a type and shadow of the Christian Pentecost, a preparation for it. Because here we have the promulgation of the new law of Christ the law of grace and the law of love and the law of the Spirit. And we see the incredible first fruits that were produced, namely 3,000 faithful souls were added to the 120 who were present on the day of Pentecost. So what happens is the apostles... Uh, along with Matthias, who is now elected to take the place of Judas. So we're back to that sacred number of 12. They are united around the Blessed Virgin Mary. And again, the scripture says there were around 120 of them. There were other women. Uh, there were other men. They were all Christians, all believers and followers of Christ. But they had to wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord ascended into heaven, and he said they needed to wait nine days before the Spirit would fall. So that was the first novena in the church. They prayed together for nine days, and the Spirit comes down upon them in the form of tongues of fire. Now that's significant as well, because the Spirit is also symbolized earlier in the Gospels in the form of a dove. And so there's a particular significance of why the Holy Spirit would appear in this form as tongues of fire. The tongues representing the preaching of the apostles. Okay, they were given the gift of tongues, which seems to me the, the best explanation is that they were given the knowledge of all of the languages that they would have to speak you know, in evangelizing people. But there is also a second miracle. That is, sometimes even when the apostles were speaking one language, it was heard in somebody's own language. So there's kind of a double miracle going on with this gift of tongues, which, by the way, has occurred other times in the history of the church. Uh, there's the story of a Franciscan friars, the the Franci Franciscan Chronicles explain how there was a friar by the name of Gentilis, and he was sent to the mission, okay, to go and evangelize in what is now modern-day Iran and Iraq. 
And he had to obviously learn the Arabic language in order to evangelize. So if I'm not mistaken, this was about the 14th century. So he goes off and he's doing his best to learn, learn the language and he simply can't manage. So he throws in the towel, he starts to head back to Italy from where he was sent. And a young man appears to him and says, stop, go back. Okay, God is going to provide you with this language. And so in faith, he turns around, he goes back, and he is given the gift of tongues, namely uh, the knowledge of the language, just as if he had been born there. Okay, if, if I'm not mistaken, St. Francis Xavier also had this gift. So the Holy Spirit pour, uh, appears in the sign of a, uh, the image of a tongue, uh, also to signify the knowledge of the divine mysteries that they would now have to preach. They are the ones entrusted with the deposit of the faith. They need to be guaranteed to communicate the truth, the saving truth of who the Lord Jesus is, of the way to salvation, in order to lead souls to heaven and to continue the same mission of Christ. As we read in today's gospel, as the Father sent me, so I send you. And so our, the saving mission of Christ is then entrusted to the apostles. Now, these are tongues of fire, okay? And this uh, symbol of fire is also present in the scriptures. The letter to the Hebrews says that our God is a consuming fire. Jesus said that he came to cast fire upon the earth. And we see in the images of the sacred and immaculate hearts, we see the flames coming forth. So this is a symbol of divine love, charity, love for God and love for neighbor. That impulse that gives one strength to move and to fulfill the mission entrusted to them by God. Because we know it's not always easy, and it's not going to be easy for the apostles. They need strength. They need the gift of fortitude in order to overcome all of the difficulties that will be present. And so the same thing for all of us. We see Our Lady is present, and she too receives the Holy Spirit. Now, one might say, now, why would Our Lady need to receive the Holy Spirit? Wasn't she already full of grace? Isn't she already the spouse of the Holy Spirit? But see, God is infinite, okay? And there can always be a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit, one way that I heard uh, Our Lady being described is as a balloon, right? When you blow air into a balloon, well, it's full, but you can blow more in there, and it become, becomes more full. So the same thing with Our Lady. And as theologians teach, whenever we, when we talk about charity and grace, there is no upper limit. And so we even see, really, in today's gospel, our Lord breathes on the apostles. This is before he ascended into heaven. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So there, when our Lord was risen and appeared to them, he's already giving them the Holy Spirit with certain particular gifts. In this instance, it happens to be the sacred power to forgive sins. When the Holy Spirit descends at Pentecost, this is going to be a new outpouring with new gifts that are appropriate to the mission they're now carrying out. And so what is the mission of Our Lady there on Pentecost? She now becomes the mother of the church. And so she too receives a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Francisco Suarez he comments on this passage of Our Lady being there present for Pentecost. And he says she receives this new outpouring and also the, gifts of, the gift of tongues. Because as mother of the church, she's going to have these first converts, 3,000 from all different parts of the world. They're going to be coming to her as the mother of the church, seeking to be taught and also to be consoled. 
And so it's appropriate that she speak to them each in their own language. However, he also points out that this isn't the first time that Our Lady exercised the gift of tongues. Because when the Magi came from the east and visited our Lord in the Grotto of Bethlehem, Our Lady appropriately would have greeted them in their own language. And so we can all receive a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, this is what the church prays for, especially this day. But this is what every faithful is called to pray for every day. There's not a day that should pass when we don't invoke the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's before we begin uh, our meditation, reading Scripture, okay? Or before discerning some important undertaking, you know? We need to invoke the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And then other prayers uh, that are provided by the church so that we can receive the appropriate gifts at the right time, okay, for the mission that God has entrusted to us in this world. And of course, whenever we invoke the Holy Spirit, like the apostles, we also want to be around Our Lady. We want to have her present and praying for us and with us as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.